Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup round of 16 match between Arzawain and Andri. Arzawain won the toss and kicked with his green humans um, to Andre with his light blue humans. Um, Andre and Paul won the World won the World Cup in 2010 in Group Ball One. He qualified from Pietro Di Minatoro League. He has a 68% win rate in Champs League, and uh, he is Spanish. Arzawain is also Spanish. Uh, qualified from the Invitational thanks to winning it four times on PS4. And he has a 76% win rate in Champs Ladder. Though, it must be said, that's on PS4. And I don't hate consoles or anything. There's a bit of banter sometimes. But um, generally, people have higher win rates on PS4 than they do on... Like, good players have better win rates on PS4 than they do on uh, PC. So, you know, maybe that's slightly inflated his, his win rate on, on PS4. And to be honest, winning the winning four titles on PS4 is less impressive than winning four on PC. Um, that's just because there's you know eight times as many players on PC, so there's more good players. I don't think that the better players on PC are particularly better than the better players on console, but there's definitely more of them because there's just eight times as many players total. So you know. After getting that out of the way, <laughs> actually like Arzawain build more for this game. He's got one, two, three, four, five guard, whereas Andre only has three, four, four, four for Andre. Andre went with block catcher, and um, Arzawain went for guard. He's older. So interesting choice to kick though. I'm, I would I would always choose to receive first half. They've both got identical teams as well, by the way. I have 12 players with an apple and three rerolls. Yeah, I would always choose to receive in a in a kind of bash mirror, which is what this is, really. Humans are just a fast bash team rather than anything else. That was a nice chain push to get another block. Quite strong down the uh, down the right hand side there, isn't he? Not gonna activate the ogre, I guess, because the ogre bone heading now would be horrific. <laughs> you can't make it up, can you? I, I don't think it was worth activating there, and this is a perfect opportunity for um, Arzawain to blitz down here and put some pressure on now. Maybe. Easy to say that again when you're watching it rather than when you're playing. But I would I would have not activated the ogre there and you know script and screened out. I don't like inviting pressure of the ball carrier. While obviously you can it's you know, someone basing the ball isn't isn't necessarily hard to deal with. But I don't think you should invite people onto your cage just for fun. <laughs> I like I like the guard guys there defending. That's okay. And the thing is, I guess from the looks of this, oh wow, double ball head. From the looks of this, Azawain is just trying to stop the score altogether. Um, because he wouldn't need this strong presence over there if he's just trying to stop him storming over half. You know, I'd be happy as humans just to let someone score and fall and then score back and forth. But um, Arzawain's going for the shut them out route. Which is fair enough. Humans are agility 3, so. You know, they're not. They can't break through particularly well. Again, this is an inviting pressure if he wants it, isn't he? Three, four, five, six. Double base with guard. 
Knock some other guys down. Tag the tag the ogre there. And he could he could go he could kind of you know put a lot of pressure on if he wanted ours away, but he seems to be happy sitting back and playing passively. Which which is absolutely fair, isn't it? There's, there's nothing wrong with, like, you know, going lower risk, lower reward. It's usually what I advocate. But, you know, I, I also, I also kind of play, um, not devil's advocate, but just alternate advocate, isn't it, you know? If so, if, if, if Azawain had gone for the ball here and gone for loads of pressure and said, oh, maybe he could have stayed back, it's just, you know, everything's kind of viable, isn't it, with the ball either. Any kind of strategy, it's just uh, up to the individual, really. So he's going to swing back out here or something, isn't he? I like that, Get, gets the ogre back involved a bit. Yeah, is there? There's two dice in the ball here, isn't there? Potentially, if he powers him, could one dice him and then oh no, oh, this this guy. Is oh dear, sorry, it's early. It's early for me. Did, he did a good, a good network of tackles on the bail. Oh, apple that instant, instant apple badly hurt the guard guy. Good old ball man. <laughs> So I guess he could have one dice blocked the ogre and then tried some other kind of blitz to get the ball, but I like not going for the ball there. Bit of a greed reroll, wasn't there? Ah, because he wanted the assist on the ogre. But Turn five, he's doing his own half. Down players. <laughs> well, down one player. Got a guy, two guys stunned. This is a tricky turn for Andre here. Lucky for him that the ogre bone did, because without that, I might have been uh, in a lot more trouble. Wow, that's that's pretty open around the back, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Uh, Reroll the bonehead there, so because he, he didn't want to lose him, because then it would have been completely open around the back. But it's still quite open around the back through this guy. Another bonehead. If there's one thing this tournament has shown, it's how bad big guys are. <laughs> wow. I'm not sure about that, Giovanni. I'm not sure it achieves a whole lot. Looks like he's going for the ball hit though. Could have just blitzed him and then based I guess. 
The problem by going for the ball hit, he's not got anything in front of me. And maybe he could have just blitzed this catcher with Mighty Bow Tackle and then put people around. Not re rolling it. Because he couldn't, because he'd, he'd, he'd re rolled that. So, yeah, that was a bit. bit of a crap turn for Arzo Lane, wasn't it? Now, um, and we can get it caged up nicely here with some good rolls. I would just try to dodge everybody out here, I think. Starting with the catcher. Because he's got dodge, and then use a reroll dodging everybody else out. But he's just going for the blocks, which is, again, absolutely fair, isn't it? Maximizing blocks is, is a good way to win, for sure. To the top people later. But now I think now after making the blocks, I wouldn't probably wouldn't have made that dodge. Um, though of course he's got the reroll, so eight times out of nine it's good. If he gets blocked, at least it's occupying the tackle, and, and all these guys have got to stand up and stuff. So I wouldn't have hated leaving him there once it, once he's played the rest of the turn the way he has done. That gives him that gives him a hit over here. That otherwise would have had been done by a lineman. The old, the old severe narcolepsy there. This is looking uh, very tricky. Very tricky for Andrew now. It's not even just scoring, it's... You know, sometimes you would just score or whatever. This isn't even easy to get the score here. Let's pause it. Now, to me here, the way, that, the way that I would try a score would be two dice block the catcher, if he pals. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With two GFIs, which is just horrible, isn't it? If he doesn't pal, then you can dodge out with him and blitz. And then dodge and double GFI, but it seems a really horrible, not easy to score and impossible to stall kind of situation. <laughs> so fair play to Arzalain for, for forcing this. When he gets the push. It doesn't go for the touchdown. So now every every roll is critical failure now, isn't it? He hasn't got a reroll for the last turn. So that's a one in nine there. And another one there. <laughs> one in three would have ended his turn then. <laughs> needed somebody around that side. And this dodge may have done him more harm than good actually. Because he's freed the ogre. Um, to make a two dice blitz on the ball. It was about 60% to knock him down. 75 on the block but then the chance of bonehead. <laughs> good old. Good old big guy. <laughs> oh man. But with, with no reroll, this was his best chance, the Ogre Blitz. And that's it, maybe. Maybe Arzawain could have uh, saved a reroll at some point. And if he'd had a reroll, I think the one dice on the ball would have been better than, than the Ogre Blitz then. Alright, so now. 
I'm going to pause this because Wolfbark said there was a way to three dice with a follow-up push. Uh, with a follow-up thing. I'm not sure because he's got the guard in. You can get this guy in and then you can get a three dice to push him out. But you would want to push him to there. You know, if you get a push, you want to push him to here, which would push out the guard to there. You could get him two assists, but he'd be two back. Oh, he would blitz though. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, he would get the extra assist. Then he could block him, and then. I don't think you'd have anyone in here. This isn't easy. I don't think you could make it. I don't think you could make it three dice into, into two dice. I think you. So what you do here is you either put this guy in for the assist and make it a three dice blitz with tackle, hoping for the power without a reroll, or you do two dice into two dice and don't move that guy here. Have him here, um, so that if you push, you can two dice block again rather than dodging. Um, as it happened, you got the knockdown on two dice. I think he, the way he did it, you should have absolutely gone three dice there. But you know, to be fair, he's you know, it's it's he's under pressure, isn't he, and nerves or whatever. So I don't think normally he wouldn't have he would have made that a two dice. He would have made it a three. I don't, however, think he could have made it a three dice needing pushes. Whereas he, he could have absolutely made it two dice but needing pushes. I'm certain of. Um, but two two dice blocks with block needing pushes is a lot easier than a three dice block needing powers, um, I think. But then he still had the dodge after that, so maybe, maybe three dice would have been a better play. And you know, I don't know after thinking about it after it's happened, so you certainly can't expect somebody to know in the middle of a, of a high pressure game. Though, if Magnus Carlsen played Blood Bowl, he would know. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there is that, isn't there? Um, you know, but I don't think anybody. Well, I'm sure nobody in the world takes blood ball that seriously. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to cut, cut these people some slack, haven't you? I don't like not going for the one turn at all here because, just why not? Sure, you've got no rerolls, but why not just go for the one turn chance? Could happen, couldn't? It? Seems crazy to not even try. Could have got the catcher there and then win four four three or something. There is a guard player that blitz though, which is good if he gets really lucky. <laughs> which he does. <laughs> um, so yeah, and Andre's apple's already gone, so that is that is gonna stick down a guard. But I've still got eleven players. Well, the double skull would have scuppered, uh, scuppered any one turn. I don't know. I just I would always go for the one turn in 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 games like this. Different in champs ladder and stuff where the result isn't that important and like there's progressions. You don't want your players to die and everything. But in this kind of format where the win is just everything, I think everybody should always go for one turn attempts really. Well, with humans anyway, with like fast teams. Even Necro. So now, again looking like overtime, isn't it? Um, Andre, Andre got pretty lucky actually to score there in the end. He made he made a bunch of dodges and, uh, and then survived the, the two dice blitz from the Ogre and still had to roll dice to score on the last turn, so... You know, he, he, he did get a fair slice of luck, but now he's down another guard. So now this is uh, four, five, five guard versus three guard. So quite a big advantage there for Arza Wayne. So you wouldn't bet against him scoring. And then it will probably be whoever wins the coin toss and overtime wins. <laughs> Classic. Classic Blood Bowl, that is. And you know, it's not really a criticism of Blood Bowl, is it? It's what happens when you've got two good players playing each other. If one was bad, 
there'd be a good chance of 2-1 in normal time but when they're both good probably going to be 1-1 one, one. just going to need like basically lucky dice or a bad mistake or good play or something like that or bad play or, you know like it it takes something special to not be 1-1 one, one really when it's it's kind of like two bash teams like this. Throw out would have been good for all the time, wouldn't it? Again, I would have been tempted to have uh, made the ogre block first just to see if he boneheaded. You would have then had the blitz to, to like, you know, get get that guy who was already there. Nope, sure hands fail. Not a not a nightmare. Humans don't really have have the ability to split the team here. But if this was Woody's or something, uh there might be a, a whole bunch of elves in the backfield, but uh, humans are just going to have to play like a, a normal, boring bash team. Hit the guy furthest forward and uh, you know, stand around in some kind of formation that resembles a screen. <laughs> So that's a decent kind of idea, isn't it? And <laughs> Arzawain's just mirroring the screen because he doesn't want anyone to get in his backfield. Relying on the Ogre Blitz. Or to hit the other one and chain out him. Ah, but then he's not out of it as well, so that's all good. Winning the ogre battle at least. Oh, does the same thing of picking up the throne hand off the I hate that. I absolutely I absolutely hate that that Arzawain does that all the time. I think it's really horrible. Because it not only does it give him an extra chance of failure, um it cuts down his options for handoffing later. You know, there might be a chance well, there might be a time where the ball carrier's based and he could just hand it off to score and now he can't. Basically, robbing himself an option. Although it gives him move, two more movement each turn, I'm sure. It's certainly easier to sack a, a strength two player than a strength three player. So, yeah, I really, I really don't like making extra rolls like that. He, he's done it a lot. He's, he's only, he hasn't played many games with humans in champs ladder. Twenty eight games with humans in champs ladder. I don't know how much he's played in. You know, tabletop or fumble or private leagues with humans or whatever, but he hasn't got many games with humans on Blood Bowl 2. Could have played loads on Blood Bowl 1 as well, couldn't he? But um, I, I don't, really don't like that pick up with a show hands to hand off to a catch. I wouldn't like doing it with, with, with elves on <laughs> 2 pluses. I guess it does mean that if he gets sacked, he's got the uh, shoe hands guy ready to react. Like, I don't think it's terrible or stupid or anything. I just, I just don't like it. Three D on the, on the blockless guard catch. I don't like this so much because again there's a huge hole in the, in the front of the cage, I would have liked that screen. Um, I think this guy would have been great here. And I've just gone for a one day. Because as it is, he's inviting something to happen, isn't he? <laughs> now it's a bit tricky with the ogre being there. It, you know, 
Andre's Olga being down and Alza wins Olga being a bit in the way makes it a bit trickier but he's still kind of inviting a bit of pressure in the front but Andre continues to just blitz the furthest forward player and screen a bit I mean, both both players have played how I would probably, you know, usually endorse of kind of like playing safe as possible and, you know, not going for it. But there's a time when, you know, it's it's never wrong to go for it, is it? Is, you know, it's, you wouldn't say that it was wrong to play more aggressively. You know, you know putting, going for a lot of pressure, it wouldn't be bad to do. Bit of a bit of a risk there, wasn't it? If he skulls there, he's in a not very good spot. But now this is pretty strong. The line of the wall of guard, all five guard in a row. No, oh. I was just going to say I like that because then it bit, blitzes him into a push, gets him three dice with him as well. Worth the reroll anyway. So now Arzuin is actually men down on offense. Um, he's quality up, but he's men down. And both will have 11 maximum if it goes to overtime. Oh, right on the end there. I guess it's fair enough, he's only strength 5, if he puts him here it's too easy to get 2 dice on him mate. That's what he's thinking, but... And I guess he's got a strong commitment over here, so having the ogre over one way is alright, but it does not make the centre a bit weaker, doesn't it? Oh man, bone in on the blitz as well. <laughs> These boneheads though... <laughs> Ogres are something else, aren't they? Big guys in general are just, just a bit crap. My tree certainly didn't do me any favours. <laughs> block though, but block is good value on them, isn't it? To be fair, a lot of t a lot of times block has saved a turnover or or kept them standing. So yeah, Azawain is doing about as much as he can there, trying to get a bit of headway, but straight away Andre's sweeping back. Um, I like that. Safe moves first. Blockless catcher with tackle mighty blow, but it does expose his does expose his blitzer a bit, doesn't it? That's a big pow because it lets him three dice with the ogre. I think that's quite a good turn from Andrew there. Very deep. And he's got a bit, you know, roughly parallel. It's going to be tough here for Arzuin because if he continues to push down, he's going to find himself shut down and maybe having to score on turn 15. This is super risky, this. 
Oh, oh. oh man. So he does the GFIs so that he can he can GFI back to here and have a full screen. Because otherwise blocks and stuff would have happened here, but wow that is that was pretty risky. <laughs> a dodge double GFI. Um and the two dice to make the ball safe. Otherwise, it would have been horrible. So there's, there's the chance of the uh, six plus uphill surf. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he'll just blitz the guy in the front and try and shut, obviously shut down here, but also he's got to shut down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can actually move three squares here and then there. So he's got quite a lot of options um, while he's waiting for scoring. He's lost Dave. He's dead Dave. <laughs> Everybody's dead Dave. Um, so, Arzawain's now used his apple. They're both going to have 11 for overtime. But, he's actually two players down in the drive now, isn't he, Arzawain? So, it's getting pretty hairy for him now. Overtime is not a given at the moment. Down another player. Where's this last guy go? Like here? No, I think that's I think that's a little bit too far in. I think here might be better. Um, just because the the humans can just go so far across. Lateral, you know, laterally they can move so far. Um, wow, pretty huge getting the thrower. So now they're both, they've both taken. Uh, oh no, he's only taken one Kaz. Kaz and Kao, he's taking two, but um, both very important. Wow, GFI, two double GFI. I'm gonna pass it to him. God, that's a bit. A bit wild, isn't it? But he makes it. <laughs> yeah, at least at least he scored. You know, it was looking it was looking bad even scoring that turn. Uh, um, so yeah, fair, you know, credit to Arzawin for finding the play to score. There is a chance of a two turn from Andre. Arzawain was thinking here. I don't know if he thinks it's turn 16. Um, I, you know, whether he thinks Andrew's only got one turn, but even then, this is this is a bad defense against a one turner. I wouldn't even mind going for the one turner here. In fact, you've got no mate, don't have to make any dodges. Um, you could sell for a one turner, but obviously, you know, it's the two turn is so much easier that he's going to have to sell for a two turn. And, you know, Ours away in here is just giving him a cage here, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. You can absolutely cage with loads of stuff here. Have a couple of catches in protected, and he's not going to be able to cover everywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So he's going to leave a gap somewhere, and he gets a blitz. So yeah, I really don't know what Arzwin was thinking there. I'd be interested in hearing why he did it, because that seems. Really crazy, and and the tight LOS, you know, it really wouldn't have been bad to have gone for a one turner. Now he's he's using his blitz to get set up in a normal defense. But if he if he had gone like a normal chevron or whatever, which it looked like he was starting to do, this guy would have been blitzed, he would have caught the ball, and um, there would have been basically no chance for Andre. As it is, the blitz has just let him <laughs> let him set up in a normal defense. <laughs> That was really weird. I think the obvious play here is to uh, actually don't think I would have blocked him. I would have blocked with the old one and blocked with this guy to free him up maybe. 
think you've got to blitz this this guy. So the, the, these three can come through. Or knock over all these. That's asking a lot. That's the push. Yeah, so then he can get the catcher through. To the handle. He's got a, he's got a double GFI scoring threat. Um, which, like it works, he does have a he does have like a screen here and stuff. But I don't know. I think. That makes it better as well. I think this is a bit dodgy. I think he could have maybe... Yeah, as I say, block, if he blocked to free up that tackler and let you go tackler, maybe he could have got an extra player through here more safely and could have gone one or two squares further forward. I think he really wanted to be further forward. You don't want to have to... Because now he can only go down the diagonal, can't he? He hasn't got the, the, the potential lateral squares. He can only go along this line. More straightforward, basically. Kaz. Another random Kaz there. Well, not random, mighty blow. I like to say random Kaz when it's a, an unskilled player. The, the bad thing about this screen is that he's got the tackler in front, so the tackler can get blitzed then run behind him. This is a pretty big GFI. I think it was really easy to score out this GFI. I think he absolutely had to do that. Um, because otherwise it was too easy to you know, pow this guy, blitz this guy for a push, and then it's just one, two, three, four, with one dodge. Um, so I think I think he absolutely had to have a guy back there. But now he's left he's left Andre with the only option is to two dice this guy and then Go down, run down the sideline, and see if the Dodgers work. Might as well blitz with mighty blow as well, just in case it doesn't work and it goes to overtime. But he makes all the rolls. So as it happened, it wouldn't have mattered if Tackle was behind because he made all the rolls. And uh, yeah. That was that was something, wasn't it? I really don't know what Arzawin was thinking with that defense. Um, really, really weird. I mean, I I guess he was planning on just reacting and then screening, but you know, just screening like that, elf screening like that. You know, uh, uh, Andre just had to roll some dice, and I think that's just not. Not really what you need. He did make four, you know. So I think I think Azawen probably had the better dice there with four cars. Um Didn't make slightly more blocks, but ultimately, I guess Andre was lucky to score his touchdown. But then, um, you know, because the sixty-two percent knockdown from the ogre. But then, you know, both players played well on defense um, on the normal drives to make them score early or. I mean, I think I think Andre should have scored early when he had the chance, really. Um, so yeah, I think both players played well in defense, apart from the two turn, where I don't know what I don't know what Arzawain was thinking there. I don't think that was the best way to do it, but that's just my opinion. It doesn't make him crazy or wrong. Um, but yeah, I think that was. <laughs> I do think it was a bit of a crazy defense. I do think it was wrong, the two turn defense. But that's just my opinion. And uh, congrats to Andre. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.